And they called it a mine! A mine! Shen's here, everyone. We can finally get started. Finally. Smoke rises from the mountain of Cheyenne. Oh. The hour grows late. Shen the engineer comes to mission control. Uh -huh. Seeking my counsel. Uh, what? More Tolkien references, Bradford. Keep up. He doesn't have the wit to see these references. His love of the halfling's leaf has clearly slowed his mind. Oh, just kill me. So, so you, have, you chosen have chosen death. death. <laughs> uh, this isn't fun. Monique, let's just get started. It's getting late. The hours later than you think. <laughs> Sectoid forces are already moving. The floaters have left Minas Morgul. The floaters? You know, I actually watched Lord of the Rings so I could get these references. Shush, 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 shush. They attacked our soldiers at Ogbamosho on March 29th, disguised as riders in black. They reached the Shire? They will find the meld and kill the one who carries it. Ruiz! Wait, I know this part. You did not seriously think that Ruiz could contend with the overwatch of a thin man. There are none who can. Are you guys gonna have like a spinny wizard fight right now? We must join with him, Shen. We must join with the thin man. It would be wise, my friend. Tell me, friend. When, when did, did the commander, the commander of, XCOM of XCOM abandon reason oh. for madness? Hey, oh, come on. What are you? You suck, Bradford. What? Completely took me out of the scene. I think I got the line right, though. Why do you have to ruin everything, Bradford? Just awful. Let's just get the meeting started. That's what I've been trying to do. You can't just sit around all day watching Bradford cosplay Treebeard. Now, that's a reference I don't get. What do you mean? Didn't you watch all three movies? Three? I mean, I watched for three hours. Yeah, there's two more movies, Num Nut. Two? When do you guys have time to watch this stuff? That's like six hours of my life. Shut up, Bradford. You don't have a life. Oh, <laughs> fair point, sir. On season two of XCOM War Story, the commander, Bradford, Shen, and Bone keep trying to save the world from an alien invasion. And our soldiers do their best not to get killed, but you know how that goes. Because that's XCOM. Baby. All right, for the cargo council funding, let's get a status update from the department heads. Dr. Vaughn? In March, we were able to lay the foundation that will serve us well going forward. We completed a single research project, Xenobiology. Just the one? Yes. We only managed to map the genome of an entirely new alien species in under a month. Sarcasm is kind of my thing, Volan. Watch your tone. Oh, snap. Shut up, Bradford. Anyway, in addition to that project, we managed to make progress on a study of the alien materials we've retrieved from the field. We expect to conclude our initial research into the alien materials in about four days. Then what? A decision will need to be made. We could prioritize improved body armor. I'll pivot to unlocking the secrets of alien weaponry. I still feel awful about the guys in the infirmary, so I'm going to vote body armor. Not so fast. Who said we were going to take a vault? They might never have been hurt if they'd had some decent weapons that could have finished off the alien scum before they ever came under enemy fire. Let's table that discussion for now. What do you need to speed things up, Volan? Same as always. More scientists, better facilities. I'll cover the facilities angle in my report. Right. How many scientists do you have on staff? We had ten scientists for all of March. The council has just provided three more. You still got that one commie on staff? I believe you're referring to Dr. Pierce. Yes, she is a great asset to our team. Well, she's got the guys down in engineering talking about unionizing and worker safety and all kinds of other crap. Perhaps you should take better care of your people, Shen. How many amputations this month? If I wanted any lip from you, Doctor, I'd scrape it off Ooh, me. Oh, there, Scrape Shen. it off your butt? I said scrape it off Shen, me. no, no. Look, how do we get more scientists, Volan? I expect member nations will want to do trade deals. If we can broker trades for scientists, that'll help him enormously. Okay. I'll keep my ear to the ground on that one. Keep pushing, Dr. Volan. Rest assured, we will, Commander. All right, moving on. Shen, engineering report. Okay, well, pretty straightforward. As you know, we made a big decision last month to excavate down to a steam shaft on level three. Cost a ton of money and time, but we're set to have our first geothermal generator online in the next three days. Yes, that is great. And it's renewable energy, good for the environment, green jobs. 
We're saving the planet from aliens and reducing our carbon footprint. Take it easy, Captain Planet. You're going to tear the crotch in your spandex uniform. You get too excited. Dude, not in front of Volan. It's okay, Bradford. We all know you couldn't tear the spandex. Oh, come on. Are you two done? Eh. When that baby comes online, we'll have quite a bit of power to work with. Unlike a certain someone we all know. Me? Now I'm done. You think I don't have enough power to work with? I'll drop trial right here, Doctor. No, Do it. no, no. Keep going, Shen. What else? Well, Commander, you want to get satellite coverage over all of North America as quick as possible. That's right, Shen. We've got one satellite under construction earmarked for Canada, which will be ready for launch before the end of April. Then we're good to go, right? Uh, what do you mean? Mexico's part of North America, sir. It is? Yeah. That can't be right. It is. Mexico's in Central America, no? Nope. It's part of NAFTA, the North American Free Trade Agreement. It's right there in the name. Oh, yeah. Regardless. Hmm. If we act quickly, we could have a second satellite ready for deployment over Mexico around the same time as that Canadian satellite. Remind me though, the problem isn't just satellites, we need uplinks, right? That's correct. When the thermo generator comes online, we'll have enough juice to build out another satellite uplink on level 1. If we time it right, the uplink and the new satellites could be operational before the end of April. All right. Well, let's greenlight the second satellite and set aside some of the council money for the uplink. Will do. What else we got? You remember you signed off on a laboratory? I did? Yes, you did. It was one of the only build-outs that didn't require enormous amounts of power. It's on level one across the elevator bay from the uplinks. Huh. Ring a bell? Oh, yeah. Right. Season 2 hiatus has taken its toll. Shut up, Bradford. Commander, it'll be operational in a little over a week. That's great news. What does it do for you, Volan? It will streamline our research efforts, for sure. Shen and I believe we will see a 20% increase in productivity. So it's as though Shen is giving me another two or three scientists. Shen's gift, eh? Where's my present? My present is to boot up your ass, Bradford. Delightful. I'll take it. All right, Bradford. Your report? Yes, sir. As noted to the council, we have a total of 42 soldiers in the barracks, 39 of which are operational. Three, unfortunately, are in the infirmary. Right. I remember. I believe we need to start thinking about an officer corps within XCOM. Officer corps? Yeah, a formal program. We'll call it the officer training school. I think we'd get bang for the buck right away. How so? Uh, better battlefield organization, tightening up the chain of command... Having an officer in the field would really allow us to get more resources into any given engagement without the whole thing turning into chaos. Hey, the Emperor protects. With better organization and command, we could go from six to seven soldiers in the field. That's a 17% increase in combat capacity. From Captain Planet to Professor Math in under two minutes. And I think it's actually more than 17% when you consider how it allows our troops to fan out, find angles, and cover for each other. And what's this officer training school going to cost, Bradford? The school itself? Like 200 credits. Steep. But we'll need cash to develop the curriculum. More cash? Training modules to add a seventh squad member, maybe another 200 credits? Jeez. Total 400 to get meaningful traction. <laughs> oh, I can't be serious. I'm <laughs> telling so you, this will be a force multiplier as important as anything else we're working on. Just tap the brakes there, Bradford. I know you think you're the reason we got any funding out of those council pricks, but if you wanted that kind of money, you probably should have teased them with that spandex bulge of yours. You think that would have worked? Never heard to try. No, hard no. It would have hurt immensely. What else, Bradford? A uh, hangar report. Keep your fingers crossed so we don't have any need for the Sky Ranger today. The pilot told me he's not going anywhere on April 1st. It's opening day and he plans to watch the White Sox and get, quote, wasted. Yeah, that's fine. That's in his contract. It is? Yeah, he's got a weird contract. Okay, well... We've got four interceptors. Two of the four are out of commission at the moment, so we're a little exposed. Shen, when will those two be operational again? They got shot to hell, Commander. Repairs on those two birds are expected to run to the middle of the month. Oh, boy. We gotta buy more interceptors, right? Or we keep our fingers crossed we don't have to blow too many UFOs out of the sky for the next couple of weeks. Oh, if we just ignore any UFOs that happen to string by. Wait, we can do that? Why not? Won't the council be pissed? Screw them. They wanted us to shoot down every UFO, they should have given us a bigger budget. Screw the council might not be a great long-term strategy. That might be true, but screw Bradford is always a winner. Indeed it is, Shen. So we're gonna do nothing? They could pull funding all together. Calm down. We're going to get North American satellite coverage up. Then by virtue of a deal I brokered earlier, we'll buy interceptors at a discount. Hmm. 
I just have to risk it for now. I don't like it. Shut up, Bradford. If we all got what we like, do you think you'd even be here? Touche. Exactly. All right, dismissed. Keep me up to date on your progress. Yes, sir. Uh, you got ripped apart again, Bradford. <laughs> On the next episode of XCOM War Stories, Sky Ranger pilot gives our boys a ride to Russia. Sky Ranger, this is Central. What's your current ETA to the abduction site? Ah, jeez, Bradford. What are you doing on my screen? Coordinating with the Russian Air Force. I need to know your arrival time. You can plaster your goofy face on my heads-up display whenever you want? Yeah. I thought we upgraded the Sky Ranger so that I could watch the White Sox or get a few games of Deep Rock Galactic in. Well, I'm hauling these idiots to and fro. Yeah, that's not why we did it. So typical. No one ever stops to consider the poor Sky Ranger pilot sitting dutifully in his cockpit hour after hour, day after day. You know how boring this job is? Trust me, Sky Ranger, I know from experience there are worse jobs. I gotta chant a mantra just to keep myself sane up here. The mantra wouldn't happen to be your expected arrival time in Khabarovsk, Russia, would it? No, why would it be that? <sighs> One could hope. My mantra is STLB. I feel like I've heard that before. What does it mean? Oh, to some it means smash the like button. But to me it means Sky Ranger's the luckiest bastard. Oh, that's nice. Although some days it's smack that loser Bradford. Okay, I I'm out. Good luck with the mix. Alright, good luck with the Russian mix.